Hi, I'm Kana. Today I'm going to show you how to make gluten-free oat flour and almond pancakes. They're very light, but they have a very nice golden surface. They use oat flour and almond, so even a small pancake is very filling. You can serve them with sweet cream and syrup, or you can serve with savory cottage cheese and salads and things like that. Ever since I started my gluten-free journey, I've come up with three gluten-free pancake and waffle recipes, and they're all very different. One is very light and airy and fluffy rice flour pancakes that I serve whenever my family wants to have sweet breakfast. And if I want to serve more savory pancake, I make my oatmeal pancakes, which are gluten-free and egg-free. And this third recipe is the oat flour and almond flour recipe that I'm going to show you today. I intend to make all three videos for different pancakes and I hope you enjoy them all. But first, please try this recipe and let me know how you like them. Let's look at the ingredients. We're using two eggs, oat flour, almond flour, and cornstarch, baking powder, sugar, and milk of your choice. You can use dairy milk or you can use plant-based milk and a little bit of salt. And we need some melted butter for the pan. And that's it. First, we're combining all the flour component. So oat flour goes in, almond flour, cornstarch, and baking powder. Two thirds of a teaspoon and salt. I'm just gonna give the flour a good mix. I'm just gonna mix them together. So just a little baking tip. Whenever you have two or three or more flours in the recipe, it's always a good idea to mix the flour parts first. That way you can get rid of any lumps or it would just be quicker to mix with the wet ingredients. So give it a good mix. Next, we're going to separate egg whites and egg yolks. And egg yolks go into the flour mixture. We're making meringue with the egg whites. So be careful not to add any egg yolk streak into the egg whites. And whenever you're making the meringue, you want a big bowl, big and nice wide bowl, because it would be easier to whip up and into the flour mix, let's add milk of your choice and mix this together very nicely until smooth. If you've ever made pancakes using regular wheat flour, you've seen this phrase, don't overmix. It's okay to have a little bit of flour left because once you overmix, you're going to get tough pancakes. Well, that's not really true in gluten-free baking, so you want to make a very uniform, nice and smooth batter. Give it a good mix. Now that the egg yolk and flour and milk mixture is nice and well blended, we're going to set this aside and we're going to make the meringue. I'm going to use the handheld electric mixer. You can also use regular handheld whisk. For two egg whites, it's completely doable to make a meringue with handheld whisk. But today I'm going to show you with the electric hand mixer. What I think is the problem with the prevalence of short videos these days is that we forget how long actually a process of cooking takes because everything is cut and zapped and made into 90 second videos or 60 second videos. We don't see how something changes from like egg whites from liquid egg whites into foam into meringue. One hand we think that it's going to be very quick like in the video or we don't feel like making the recipe at all because you would be like well making meringue might take too long so i'm not going to bother doing it so today i'm going to show you exactly how long it takes i'm not going to cut and trim any parts of it from egg whites to foam to meringue 
in, I think it, it'll only take about three minutes or so. Okay, so watch me do it. And we're going to set the egg whites in a bowl and sugar on the side. We're not going to add sugar first. We're going to make light foam with just the egg whites. When it's all nice and foamy, we're going to add half of this sugar. When the first half of sugar is dissolved, we're going to add the rest of sugar and whip it up into nice and glossy brine. That looks good. See, it wasn't that bad at all. It took a few minutes, just a few minutes. When they say soft peak, it means that the tip is not gonna shoot straight out. You want it to go down a bit. Can you see? And it's very nice and glossy. Before mixing the meringue into the egg yolk, let's set the pan ready. We're going to be using the lid, so get your lid out as well. Let's turn the heat on to medium and medium low. You don't want it smoking hot. Okay, while the pan is warming up, let's add a little bit of meringue into the egg yolk mixture and nicely mix them together. What I'm doing is I'm just loosening the egg yolk mixture because it's really heavy with the flour absorbing all the liquid. It's gotten really hard, so I want to loosen it up before adding the rest of egg whites. It's always, always a good idea to do this. Just add maybe a third of very light meringue into thick egg yolk batter. Okay, it's nicely mixed together. We're going to add this egg yolk mixture into the meringue. You can go the other way around too. You can add the rest of egg whites into the egg yolk mixture. I'm doing this only because my bowl is bigger for the meringue. And just lightly fold the meringue into the egg yolk mixture. You don't want to over mix, just stop mixing when there are still a little bit of white streaks. Pan is hot enough. I have a um, wet cloth that I can temper the pan when it gets too hot. If it starts to smoke, you want to set it on the wet cloth. 
you don't want it scorching hot, but you want it warm enough. Let's spread some butter. Spread it around. And we're going to pour this batter like so. Just want a big spoonful that would spread naturally into about uh, about four inch diameter, ten to twelve centimeters. If it's too small, just add another dollop or half a dollop. This is my twenty six centimeter pan, and I'm making three three pancakes at a time. And let's put a cover on. Keep the temperature or heat to medium low. You don't want it too low that the batter spreads out. You don't want it too high that they start to burn. Let's check. There are little bubbles around the edge and if the, the side that's touching the pan feels dry, they're ready to be flipped. Wish me luck on this one. Woo! Perfect. And another one. And third one. Yay! <laughs> okay, we're going to cover again and cook thoroughly. Keep the heat low. Okay, just one quick tip when you're making pancakes with meringue. You would want to finish cooking in as short of a time as possible, which means that you want to make them in a smallest batch as you can to serve your family. That's because the longer you keep this batter with the meringue on the counter, the less the power of meringue when you're cooking. The air bubbles start to shrink and they start to disappear and they become liquidy the longer you keep on the counter. So I recommend that you get out your biggest pan and bake them in a smallest number of batches. Let's check for doneness. Ooh, looks good. When you touch and, and they're springy, they're ready. So let's slide them over to a plate, warm plate if you can. Look at that, nice and high and fluffy. And we're just going to continue with the rest of the batter. I'm just gonna chop up some pistachio. That's going to be cream and pistachio pancake. And maple syrup, of course. <laughs> Now for this pancake recipe, three pancakes may be too many, but I'm just going to serve them on a big plate. Three pancakes with a little dusting of powdered sugar. Dusting of powdered sugar makes everything look good. Wouldn't you agree? And a dollop of cream, whipped cream. And sprinkle pistachio here they are oat flour and almond pancakes with cream and pistachio of course you can drizzle some maple syrup if you want Thanks for watching.